What's going on guys? I'm Steve. Welcome back to the channel. Welcome back to another video. If it's your first time stopping by the channel, hit that subscribe button. Trust me, you won't regret it. You're a returning subscriber as always, guys. Welcome back and I do appreciate the support. Guys, this uh, story just came across my news feed and it happened this morning, which is Saturday. And um, it happened in Atlanta, Georgia. And it's the story of three men that wound up being shot dead over an argument that ensued to, between other people where they were arguing about, and get this, who has the most money and whose gun is the biggest? Yeah, I've asked this question before and I'll ask it again. What the fuck is wrong with us, man? Seriously, what is wrong with us? That type of argument, it shouldn't even be argument number one. And to have it come to where people lose their lives over the most fickleest conversations, it's beyond me. I'm done talking. Take a look at the story. You're gonna see, you're gonna hear a couple of points that were made that I want to address wholeheartedly because we have a lot of problems and nobody wants to offer the solution. And we need to talk about it today. Check this out. Family members tell Fox 5's Joy Dukes they can't even begin to process just what happened. I fell out um, because this is not what you want to see. For Westside resident Kiwi Ashmead, the site of this crime scene on Evans Street Saturday was traumatic. I'm supposed to go on a family vacation next week, and now we, we're not going with my nephew. Um, and so we have to bury up my nephew. She identified her nephew, 20-year-old Jacoby Maddox, as one of the three people Atlanta police detectives say were shot and killed when an argument escalated to gunfire just after 1 p.m. Maddox was a father to a one-year-old boy. He was a tall, gentle giant, um, very respectable. Um, unfortunately, you know, the streets got a hold of him. As a longtime resident, this woman who identified herself as TT but did not want her face shown says she's seen just how dangerous the streets can be. She says she was there in the moments leading up to the shooting. Two guys arguing over who got money and who pistol is the biggest. I say it's very concerning about what's going on now is getting very outrageous over here now with the senseless killing, senseless shooting. President Monique Burstyn echoed those concerns, telling Fox 5 she lost her own daughter to gun violence in 2017. I feel that it's sad that mothers like me have to bury our children. Our children are not burying us anymore. We're burying them. West End residents say shootings are an everyday occurrence. And while it seems more and more youth are being named the victims, they're calling on parents and city officials to take more action to address it. But our city need to get it together. You mayors, mayors in the past that have said what y'all was going to do for our kids then didn't get done, pay attention. In Atlanta, Joy Dukes, Fox 5 News. Well, ladies and gentlemen, there you have it. Two people arguing, one bystander, all three of them dead. I don't understand it. I don't understand it at all. And I mean, if you're in the black community, when is enough enough? Seriously, when is enough enough? Like this don't bother you? If you need that desensitized to where stuff like this doesn't bother you, a stupid argument that turned into gunfire and the loss of three people does have a web effect of creating sorrow and people, a bunch of people being upset that they have nothing to do with it. The lady said she was there when her nephew got shot. That boy's 20 years old. 20 years old. I can remember when I was 20 years old, all I was thinking about was having fun, hanging with my friends, going to work, trying to get a job or get a career path where I could do something where I could retire and getting on girls or having a girlfriend. Looking forward to being an adult. Now it's like, man, it's, stuff is all over the place. That's a childish argument. How can anybody feel bad for you when you go out like that? I remember back in the day when stuff started getting hot and heavy and you couldn't break up the situation or people wouldn't stop talking. People would walk away because they don't want to be a witness to nothing or they don't want to get caught up in no BS. Nowadays, people relish that. You got three people out there arguing. Well, two people arguing about 
whose gun is bigger and who makes the most money or has the most money. Let me guess. I guarantee you they wasn't talking about who got the better job to make that money. Or what gun, the gun being bigger and what, what damage it can cause to somebody that looked like them. And we need to be real. We need to stop dancing around the circle and jump right into the fight and talk about what's really going on. And we don't do it. Childish antics. A lot of now, 20 is the new 16. It is. You can look at kids right now, a lot of them 20 years old, don't have a lick of sense. A lot of them think like 16 year old kids. It's like the, 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 the mental capacity of a 20 year old is like a 16 year old in a lot of cases. They don't know stuff. School is starting to pull back what they teach these kids too. That's another thing we need to think about because a lot of kids ain't getting parented at home. And that's another thing we're going to talk about that. They're not getting parented at home the right way. And they're coming to school and the school is not babysitters. So they just going to teach whatever they're going to teach. And if you pick it up, you pick it up. And if you don't, you don't because every year these teachers have conventions, all this other stuff. They go over what they're going to do with the curriculum. They study stats and stuff. And a lot of us are getting dumber and dumber. So they got to dumb down a thing. A lot of times people that graduated high school now couldn't pass when I was in school. And that was what, 1990 when I graduated? The curriculum was different. They taught more stuff. It's like now they want dumb people to go out in the world. Why? Because the less intelligent you are, the more valuable you are, either as an inmate or an employee. Lady said, and I disagree with this. Lady spoke, trying to sound intelligent. Oh, well, children are burying us now. We, I mean, children supposed to bury us. Now we're burying our children. Man, that's a cliche thing. I know you meant well, but the thing she said that rubbed me the wrong way, and no disrespect to the lady. I mean, she was speaking what she thought. I disagreed with it. She said, oh, the city needs to get it together. All the stuff they promised our kids, that's a 20-year-old man. Ain't nothing promised to him. What do you mean? They promise your kids. It's not the city's uh, problem or responsibility to take care of what happens in the house. A lot of stuff that these kids see out in the street or what they privy to with music that a lot of people are not uh, monitoring their kids and stuff like that. It, it, it spirals out of control. You never know what kind of human being you got until they go out that house, leave your house for good. And then you know if your teachings was absorbed like a sponge through them. Or you can teach, put, and this goes both ways. You can put as much as you could positive in front of your children. And they can go out there and meet one idiot with a warped mind and get them caught up in some BS. And in a split second, their life can change forever. Ma'am, it's not the city's uh, responsibility to raise your children. It's not the school's responsibility to babysit your children. If the school has to take time out of their busy day to call home or the police got to call you or you got to get a call from jail, whose fault is that? Seriously, we need to start taking a lot of accountability for some of the stuff we did. A lot of people that watch my channel were responsible parents. And some of us still got kids that ain't did what they were supposed to do. And it's struggling. Nobody has children with the idea, or I hope they don't, with the idea that you want them to do worse than you. You try to put the best in your kids. Sometimes the result is the result. It's nobody's fault. But, I mean, you can't blame the city. You got to blame parenting. Was his father around? Was, uh, you know... I'm going to tell you something. A lot of women say, oh, I can raise a kid. Yeah, you can raise a kid to 18, survival-wise. But you can't monitor a boy in the street like a man can, especially when he's in his teens. And then you coming out there trying to check him, you make him look weak in front of his peers, and it messes with his self-pride and stuff. And a lot of times it makes a very aggressive child or young man. Men are important. Fathers are definitely important, and they're missing in the black community. I tell a lot of guys, Sometimes you got issues with these girls. I've had them. Sometimes you got to put it up, put it, 
be facade, swallow your pride, and just be there for your kid. And I'm not saying you got to be in the vicinity, but be active with the child. And sometimes it's hard because a lot of ladies out there do make that hard for them. You need to be ashamed of your damn self. But it's not about that. I just brought that up because this story right here where the lady said, oh, the city needs, what can the city do in your house? Discipline, conflict resolution, problem solve. That's come from the home. Ma'am, people overlook that. You know what I'm saying? Another thing. Why are we always trying to outdo each other? We always trying to like shine on people that ain't got it. Like it was, it's, it's, a, it's a cliche I heard a while ago. And it said, never show a hungry man your plate. If you go on Instagram right now or anywhere, you see people showing off money, flipping money in the air. They talking to the money, knowing it ain't, ain't fucking saying nothing to them. All this goofy stuff and this learned behavior. Somebody sees somebody else do it, they do it. Then they want to outdo somebody. And you got people walking around with a bunch of money on them. Some of them got three-year-old kids in rap videos, two-year-old kids, babies that can't even speak, big gold chains on, handfuls of money. They don't even know what the hell it is. We are destroying ourselves from the inside out. Nobody's speaking about this. Everybody will talk about the end result, blood on the ground, a body marked out in chalk, people crying at the site, a funeral. Everybody saying he didn't do nothing. He was a good person, but he was out there doing bad shit or she. We only look at the after effect. Are we that condition that we can't go in and diagnose the problem and try to fix it before it festers and becomes full blown? That's the problem we have. That's what's killing us. We always trying to do better, act like we better than somebody. But it's temporarily, you know, what we have on us or what we have at that time. If you don't know the value of shit, you'll never have shit. So it don't matter if you have more than somebody else right now, you're going to give it away and put it back into the economy for somebody else to use it for what it's worth anyway. We got people killing each other over sneakers, taking cars, fickle stuff that's man-made that you can acquire yourself by doing the right thing. Nobody wants to wait for nothing no more. Give me a comment, man. This is stupid. I mean, how dumb are you? You arguing over something that don't mean nothing. Your gun's bigger. So what? And you got more money at the time. So what? That make you better than somebody? Or you get, gives you power over somebody? We are silly people sometimes, and nobody will feel bad for us when we don't feel bad for each other. I'm Stock Market Steve for the Dynamic Reason channel. As always, like, comment, share, and subscribe. By the time you see this, I'll be back in Houston. I'll leave tomorrow morning. And uh, can't wait to get back. See you guys in the next video. Take care.